Hey guys. Well, I, I wanted to talk to you about head trackers. Now, essentially I've been going through a little bit of an exercise trying to get a half decent wireless head tracker to work. Now, the rationale behind this is quite simple. If you took your old HDO goggles, you could plug a Trinity module and you had a little cable going down to your air or to your radio and you had a head tracker. It worked great. HDO 2s have come out and it's kind of... <laughs> well, there's no longer a head tracker there unless you modify the goggles, uh, which is a bit of a pig. And then, um, of course, these days I'm flying a lot with the Orcas and they, they've got a cable which runs from here, but <sighs> I've got to be honest, I'm not... I think I said in a previous video, I don't like constantly opening and closing these rubber cases. So um, I actually have a wireless relay from my tracker to my goggles and I thought, you know, a wireless head tracker might be the way to solve this problem. So um, yes, they've got a little gyro and everything in here. Am I going to use it? No. So I thought, I've got to come up with a better plan. And I have. So um, here we go. This is, um, well, it looks a little bit like a Furious FPV battery case because I designed it that way. But um, I ended up following the Orca lead on their battery and I put a little clip on. And let me just clip it onto here so you can see what I mean. Uh, if I could actually do this on camera it would be brilliant because it's never easy. There you go. And you can see the idea. It's hooked on and then I can move my head round, I can do what I have to do and it all works. And then it's got a handy balance lead for the battery which as you can see well, I, I normally use a lead coming up from the, the ground station, so that obviously goes into there. And I can pop in oh, my trainer, and off we go. It's powered up, it's head tracking, it's doing exactly as it has to do. Which is good. Now, question is, does it work? And well, it does, so I'm going to show you. So, first thing we do, I've got my radio. And I'm just going to show you... Oh, can you guys see that display over there, which is on 2%? And you can see, well, if I get that up, look at that. It's moving in relation. Doing exactly as it should. And that's just the pan axis I'm showing, but it does tilt and roll too. But, um, <laughs> I guess the question is, how did I do this? Now, let me pop all this rubbish off, and I'll give you a quick run through. Okay, so... What, what dawned on me while playing with the jumper is a new feature that the OpenTX and multi-protocol module has within it. And essentially, you can tell the internal multi-protocol module to act as a receiver. Now, this is normally used for wireless um, buddy box systems, and it works great because you can bind up and it just goes. There is a caveat. You need to have an external module to fly on or on it you know, double up on the multi-protocols. So you kind of, you need two modules to do it. So one to control the aircraft and one to act as a receiver. But then OpenTX can be configured to receive that signal. So um, in my case, well, the multi-protocol module can do this with FlySky receivers and with FreeSky receivers. So I found myself a little DJT module, which is the old, um, it's the old external module, and you could probably do this with a... Ooh, it's an, is it an XJT, the newer one? But I, I had a DJT, and they work well. So I gutted out the insides of the board, and I've wired it all up inside. And the great thing about this, these things were designed to receive a PPM signal. So all I've done is I've taken a quantum head tracker, the quantum um, no-drift head tracker that they sell um, on Hobby King, and essentially I've wired the stuff in, and I mounted it all in here, bound it up to the radio, and off it goes. It works perfectly. So, um, yeah, that's a bit of a result. It means I'm completely hands-free wireless. I can plug the head tracker on and I can just get on and fly. And should I choose to move between goggles, all I do is basically take that along. Um, now, nothing's ever easy. It never is. There's, um, there's one one minor niggle with the the um, DJT module is it's outputting 100 milliwatts, which I don't really like 100 milliwatts banging around on the side of my head. Um, so um, for now on the prototype, this is very internally, it's completely wrapped in foil, the antenna's wrapped in foil, it, it's kind of, it's so attenuated. And I've got a little immersion power meter and I can see it's gone from 100 down to about 10, which it's a significant 
reduction in power and I can get about five meters away and it cuts out. So that's for prototype it works. But I have a better solution and the better solution is to use a sort of um who what are they? They um the multi protocol modules. Um now I've got one from iRange X on the way and the great thing about the multi protocol is you know if you get the type with a little rotary dial on the back what what you can do is you can program that when you're in a position on the dial that it will be using free sky mode great but i can also reflash the firmware to tell it to run in low power mode now the theory behind this is that i can get down to something like 0.5 milliwatt which is going to be good for maybe two meters now if i can get down to 0.5 milliwatt output in a little box like that i've got no issue this thing sitting there all day it's less than my mobile phone is pushing out so not a problem but um yeah, so that's kind of the plan. Version 2 will be a little bit more evolved around that. Um, and there's also a couple of other things that version 2 is going to have. Is, um, I've taken some inspiration from the Immersion RC PowerPlay, which is this little adapter. Now, the idea is that that gets banged to the back of your head and stays permanently on the goggles. And then that literally just clips in, because that's what the PowerPlay does. So um, I I've got some plans I'm hatching in the background. In fact, the designs are already done, as you can see here. I've got to print them, but it'll be too noisy to print while I'm doing the vlog. So the next version of this will essentially be designed that one of these will sit on the back of my head and I can just go clip and off I go. And it can kind of, that can stay on the goggle permanently and this will just get clipped on if I require it. So it kind of works. Um, I'm actually really chuffed. Um, now, I guess there are other ways you can achieve this. Um, I've actually got over here, <laughs> this is, um, and worth a mention, is the Arcbird wireless head tracker. And they actually sell this and it uses 433 meg to do it. It's okay, it does the job. There, there are a couple of negatives, you know, it, it's kind of, whilst this is the head tracker a little bit and that's supposed to sit up on your head here and do its thing, it's a two axis head tracker. And I'm not so fond of two axis, I like three axis. Um, I find if you have a three axis head tracker, it just tracks everything better. Whereas two axis tends, it picks up a roll and thinks you're doing a yaw and things like that. So it gets confused. Three axis is the way to do it. So the Arcbird, it's a bit of a shame. And then the downside, obviously that now has to be wired some way into your radio, which you could do on the outside or wire it on the inside. You know, I think the way I've done it is a bit cleaner and neater and I'm happy. So um, yeah, there you go. I have, my wireless head tracker. I have some new designs to come out and a version two of it, but it works. It's um, it's one more step to being completely hands-free. Anyway, enjoy your day, guys. Cheers.